Hello everyone, this is Melissa the Dreadful Mystic. And Michael Blackthorn the Deviant Witch. And this is starting out solitary. And this week's topic is candle magic. Ooh, we're going to have so much fun. Okay, so... Uh, this week we're talking about candle magic. Uh, we'll discuss the different types of candles, um, how to dress them, and some of the other questions that we asked on the page. And if you haven't liked the page yet, definitely check out uh, Starting Out Solitary on Facebook. Like the page, interact with us there. Um, we'll definitely start asking more questions and uh, you can interact and be a part of the process. So when we do you know, our shows and such, uh, we will um, be able to offer you more. And if you have any questions about anything pertaining to candle magic, definitely utilize the comment section below and ask. And we will be of service and do our best to respond. So let's get, um, let's tackle the questions first. Uh, so one person asked, uh, do I have to snuff my candle out? Is that important or is it not important? And I know Rose expressed um, a really great response, but let's just tackle that as well. Well, you know, it's it's going to be all about you. If you do not feel like you need a snuffer, then you don't need a snuffer. I think the main reason why that became very popular is, you know, the idea of not blowing away your magic. You know, uh, so to me, it never made sense to me personally because my magic is going out into the world anyway. So <laughs> that's the whole point, you know. So uh, blowing a candle out physically with your breath is, uh, it, what else, uh, you know, if you're blowing it out, you're blowing it out into the world. That's what you're wanting. Know, you want your magic to go out and do its job. So personally, I do not use a snuffer. Uh, like I said, some people do, and that's totally fine. It's really a personal preference, in my belief. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I don't. I don't think I even own a snuffer for a candle. I don't think I do. Just one more thing to have on hand, and you know, be cluttered and clean. But um, I just don't. I don't need one, and I choose not to use one because, it's, again, I don't connect with it. Um, if I am going to put out a candle, I will blow it out, or I'll use my fingers and do that. Um, but when you're blowing, <laughs> this always sounds so wrong, but when you're blowing out a candle, uh, especially as witch, when you're connecting with the flow of energy and you're utilizing that magic, um, you connect with everything that you do. And so when you are in that process and when you blow out the candle, you blow out the flame, you pay attention to you know your body's process, your, your energy and the way you interconnect with everything that's going on. So it is a magical aspect where you're releasing that essence, um, you're stopping it for that moment and that's it. It's not blowing the magic away, it's you expressing that it's done for this moment. So you still have the, you know, your candle's magic, you still have the process that you're doing, uh, you're just stopping it at that uh, place. Um, so yeah, and if y'all use snuffers or if you don't use snuffers, that's definitely up to you. Um, definitely let us know why you choose to do what you do because that's a good discussion to have, it's fun. Um, and then we had another question, what was that one? Um, oh yeah. yeah. The point that they were making that don't we just let the candles burn out on their own? And honestly, for the majority of my candle magic, yeah, that's exactly what I do because tea lights are like two, three hours tops. Votives, I may possibly, depending on how much time I have, blow out a votive and then relight it again to finish, you know. And some spells do require more than one day. So if you have tapers, you know, and, and you're doing like a three-day candle spell, then obviously you're going to blow it out, you know, at certain points on the candle to even out the three days. But mostly, tea lights, you know, you don't need those to, you don't have to blow those out. Right. They're going to burn out on their own. So a lot of the work I do 
um, I do just let it burn out. But like if I have a seven day candle, you know, the point of it is to, to extend throughout those seven days. So I'm not going to let it burn for seven days. I, I honestly think if you burned it without blowing it out, it would not last. <laughs> right, so, right. You know, it really depends on the work you're doing, what kind of spell you're casting. If you, if I want a quick road opener spell, I'm going to use an orange tea light, and it's going to burn out in a couple of hours. But I want it to be quick. You know, that's the beauty of candle magic. It is so versatile. You can use it for anything, pretty much. Um, there's so many ways you can utilize them. So definitely, if it's quick, easy to burn candle, you know, then definitely. I'm just going to let it burn itself out. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like you said, it just really depends on the working that you're doing. Um, if you, you know, you can't always leave your candles burning because that's not necessarily a safe thing. If you're going to have to go to work and such and you're doing a long working and that candle needs to burn, you're going to have to put it out. That's the smart thing to do. So, and again, like you said, if it's like a seven day process or even longer, um, you need to make sure that you uh, have it for however long you need. And so you will um, stop the burn, you know, stop the flame and uh, allow it to do what it needs to do throughout your time. Um, but yeah, that's just a personal thing. It just depends on your practice and what you're putting out there. Uh, so just pay attention to that and whatever it is that you choose to do, uh, write that down, make note of it and how it feels to you and then do the exact opposite and make note of that to see how you feel when you just let it burn down, you know, straight throughout. And then when you take time to uh, build that energy and each day you put something different into that working and you expand on it. Right. So that's a good thing to do. Um, let's talk about uh, like the different, the different types of candles that you can work with, like the shapes, the sizes, uh just everything um because you know when, when you're doing candle work when you're doing magic um everything has a different energy that it expresses and so of course what i have on hand a skull candle so that would be different you'd utilize that for maybe you know honoring someone who has passed honoring life uh, con uh connecting with spirits um communicating with you know loved ones people from afar anything to do with like the dead and like, just honoring of your spirits exactly yeah i have several skulls <laughs> what do we call that one this is my anal bead candle because <laughs> that's what it looks like <laughs> It really and, does. And the specific deity that this candle is used for, I have another one that's that's already been uh, burned. Uh, she wouldn't mind me calling him that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but and, and that's what I choose to use something like this for. Uh, you know, uh, something that's that has a specific image carved into it. I use for specific things. I have, uh, and I wish I brought them, but I didn't. But. I have a man and woman oh, yeah. image carved candle. They happen to be um, very Day of the Dead esque, but uh, mo a lot of people use uh, man and woman candles for love spells, um, love curses, breaking people up. So they can even you can even use imagery candles like that where where it's the image of a person as a puppet. Yeah, a wax puppet. So, depending on the image and what you want to use it for, <laughs> you you can really customize that to, to your spell work. You know, if you have a candle, I've used a lot of, which this is just a red candle, but it's specifically for love. I've used a lot of candles in heart shapes, put on my love altar, or even the candle holder. Right. I have several um, heart shaped candle holders that, that, are, that I use for love spells. Um, on my love altar so even a candle holder can have an effect on on how you utilize it for a certain you know certain spell work right absolutely and, right, absolutely. Um, and um, how do you have this one 
Uh, and obviously you would use like phallic uh, candles, you know, to um, represent that energy. So if, if especially like if you're trying to do fertility magic and you need to help someone to get it up really, um, and you need, if someone wants to get pregnant, uh, you can work with a phallic candle. This one's super kind of weird because it's like very realistic and it grosses me out. Um, I don't know why. It really bothers me that I have it in my hand right now. But <laughs> but um, they work really well, again, for fertility, for, um, you know, honoring, you know, the sacred masculine, really, um, and channeling that energy. And if you want to, um, you know, get in touch with uh, that aspect, if you really want to, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of male practitioners have... Uh, a hard time connecting even female practitioners um have a hard time connecting with you know the sacred masculine with the god um or god or whoever uh that you choose to call but working with a phallic candle and anointing it with oil and such in a, in a different way um however you choose uh can help you really um understand that aspect and, and be comfortable in uh, the sacred masculine and the masculine energy because a lot of us have very distinct beliefs and patterns when it comes to the male energy um, and we have a lot of things that we have to heal about that because a lot of us have had very um, harsh experiences with men with 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 the the, the male essence um, and that very uh, at times very harsh and projected energy and so uh, Obviously, as, as a whole, we associate, you know, the phallus uh, with male energy. And so it'd be perfect, again, to utilize that, to connect with that, so you can work on healing your thought processes and helping you to, to re remove any blockages uh, from that. Um, and again, you can work with the infertility or, you know, if... Uh, a lover or someone, you know, your husband um, has cheated on you, you can use a dick candle basically to put that shit away. Um, yeah. You know, you can, you can definitely use it to create erectile dysfunction to, you know, whenever he goes in and <laughs> literally goes in, uh, tries to go in uh, to other scenarios, um, you can use it to, he can't get it up really you know and that's a good way to work with them um as well as if you have a man or if you are a man you can use it to protect your nature because let's face it and it's not just a magical thing it's very mundane as well um when you have sex with other people uh you give a part of yourself to each individual that you have sex with and so you can get tied up in their energy and so when you start acting different or your energy is a little different, you don't know why, it could very well be something that you've taken or you've given during the hookup process or the sexual encounter that you've had. So this candle can help actually call your power back, protect it, you know, and all of that. So, yeah, it's, you know, those are perfect for that. Um, but yeah, different types of candles, you have your skull, you have your phallic, you have, um, all I can think of is anal beads. Uh, you have your votives, you have your tea light, you have your, your knob <laughs> candles. Um, and uh, the candles, those are very popular. They burn very quickly. Uh, you know what I like about candles like this, like small votives, uh, chime candles, over tea lights, is the ability to carve on them is a lot simpler you have a little bit more room you know something like this there you can put a whole bunch of stuff on here that you would like to use you know in case you don't have oils if you want to um, dress a candle you can carve into them you know if you and, and you know y'all that's what i love about candle magic is you can literally walk into any store buy a candle and that's all you need you can carve your sigils. You can write your petition on the candle if you can write small enough. Right. So it makes it really easy. You know, tea lights, I love them because they're quick. 
fast. You can still write on the tin. They pop out of the tin pretty easily. So, oh, and that fell out. But you can uh -huh. write on that, you know, they're very easy to put back together. So, um, yeah, it's, they're, they're so versatile. Seven day yes. candles, I love these, or devotional candles, um, dedicating them to a certain deity, dedicating them to a certain specific purpose. If you are um, really bad at procrastinating, you can create a sigil and put it on here. You can do it with marker, you can take a piece of paper, do that, tape it around here, whatever you choose. It's so easy to do you know my, you know your prosperity altar use this but all kind you can put an entire spell on this sucker you know <laughs> as long as you write it you know in the room that you need on a piece of paper and light it and, and you just go and of course oils herbs and anoint handles with so be careful though with the oils and herbs that's how fires happen I'm yeah. speaking from experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's awesome, you know, and all, another thing that you should take into consideration is, again, the type of candle that you're using, but how fast it burns. Like, birthday candles make a wish. It's very instant magic. So if you need something like in, in a pinch, you need something really fast, then you'd want to use something that's going to burn out fast. Not necessarily a tea light, because that's, that's a little longer, but if you really want instant like you really need something to work you need it now like if you want to do a prayer or whatever and you just want to add to that magic um use a birthday candle that shit goes up really fast and if you want to have fun with it do the ones that um that spark that's super cool and it's it makes it a little more intense and, and as it sparks and it creates that atmosphere you feel that magic connect you, you you're connecting with uh what the visual aid and everything else and so it just makes it a little more special and, and fun um so birthday candles like instant magic right now right here let's do this need that you know pick me up uh motivation you can you can use a birthday candle for motivation um tea lights are a little more they're instant but they are lengthy if that makes sense like it, you prolong the experience a little bit um so you're gonna get it uh, but it's something that's going to take a little time, but not a lot of time. Right. So, exactly. yeah. And, and you just really pay attention to how all your candles are created. You know, let's say you burn from here and it's small up here and it get, at the base is bigger. You know, it starts out small and then it ends with this big event. It ends with, hey, I got my shit. You know, I got, I, I have this, uh, this thing that I cast for and it's going to be big and I'm going to notice it because it starts out as a seed you know you planted the seed you created the spell and as it burns it, it starts to you know manifest in, in bigger ways yes exactly and that's why you know drapers are so popular and then shine candles you know to me shine candles and tea lights burn about the same amount of time it could be these chime candles are made out of paraffin wax and have cotton mix so they're not made out of the most expensive products so they burn a lot quicker and that's something else you want to you know play around with soy candles are going to take a lot longer to burn because of the way the soy wax is the can the way the wick is um, you know, it's going to take longer than, than say, a paraffin wax. Like, this is paraffin wax. Uh, I, and, and also, paraffin wax, when it's made like this, this is really hard to write on. Right. <laughs> because it's super hard. <laughs> so, um, I use, that's why I use this as a, a devotion candle and not a spell candle. Um Whereas this is paraffin and soy, and you can tell by the texture, it is not near as hard. So it's really easy to carve into. Right. So things like that, and that all comes with experience, but play around with different things. Don't, you know, everyone, a lot of people like to buy their candles from the same place. You know, you get a lot of people buying from Azure Green and places like that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But experiment some with different candles, see how they burn, see, you know, because 
the burning part is the energy part. You know, that's the the wax and everything else has to do with the layers and filters that you're adding to the energy of the candle. Right. The magic comes from the flame and the burning. So to me, experimenting with different kinds of candles with different product, you know, made by different people um, and, and the materials are made out of is really important to your spell. So you know how long something burns. You understand, you know, the difference in the materials and, and what have you. So you are better prepared for how that spell is going to manifest. Right. Oh, I like that. And, you know, we've covered a little bit about all of the, you know, the basics. Um, let's talk about dressing your candle, because why not? Uh, a lot of people have very specific ways of dressing their candles. Um, so, yes, how do you prefer to dress your candle, and do you dress it differently for different reasons or for different, you know, workings? Right, yeah. I, do, I dress it differently for different workings. It just depends. You know, um, <laughs> if I'm going to get rid of something, I usually dress um, from top, yeah, top down, right? Isn't that right? The top down, and then when you want to bring something to you, it's the bottom up, or do I have that reversed? Top down, usually it's like you're bringing something to you, and I think it's from the bottom yes, up, you're trying to... Yeah, bottom up, you're pushing it away. Okay, yes. So I always have to think about that for a while before I dress. When I dress my candles, I honestly don't use oils a lot because I've almost caught my house on fire. Yeah. So it's just safer for me <laughs> to um, etch on candles to me. And, and to me, it adds something more to it. But whenever I dress a candle, it is I keep in mind what the purpose is for. Like... I usually use black candles for banishing, so I'm going to dress this candle. If I dress it, it's going to be from the bottom up, pushing it away from myself. Um, there are times, uh, like, okay, and then with the love candle, if I was to dress this candle, it would be from the top down because I'm bringing love to me. So, um, and usually when it comes to oils, I personally like prefer something like olive oil, maybe grapeseed oil, but I kind of avoid that. Almond oil, things like that, that will go on easily. And I don't have to put a ton of it on there <laughs> because if I do, again, I will burn my house down. <laughs> um, I usually dress it with oil and then roll my candle in herbs. If I'm also gonna use herbs, I, I very rarely mix it all together. <laughs> yeah. It depends. Yeah, like that candle, you know, the, the image candles would be kind of challenging to do that with. Um, so I might mix it all together for those. But um, well, for something like this, I have specific goals created for specific deities. Right. So um, yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, the way, you know, there's so many different ways, like traditional ways to dress your candle. Um, I know, like, to really contain the power um, of the candle, some, like, they'll go from the bottom to the center, and then they'll go from the top to the center to really imbue that candle with power. And um, that's one way you can do that. And definitely, like Melissa expressed, like, when you're, you know, dressing that candle, you want to pay attention to what you're doing, and you want to tune into the process, and you tune into the energy, you feel it, and then you pour it into the candle that you're working with. And so when you have the oil, the oil will connect with you, and you'll raise a, a specific vibration from the oil that you have, um, and then you'll place it in the candle, and the candle is very specific as well, especially like this, as a skull. I'm going to use it to honor, you know, those who have come before me. Um, and so I would take an oil, that, a specific oil that I've created, and this one actually fits well because it would be for that, and I wouldn't get a lot of oil. I just, like, you know, a little dab, a little, little dab, because, like Melissa, we don't want to burn shit. Um, <laughs> it's happened. Oops. Oh my um, so but yeah, just a little bit. And then you would take it. And as you focus on the work that you're doing, as you allow your your senses to, to heighten and you allow your, your senses to really travel and become that experience, um, you, you place your 
thumb, whatever you're going to use to anoint it, on the candle, and you push it in, and then in whatever direction. I usually, if I'm going to like really um, empower something, I'll go from the base up, top down, meet at the center. Um, if I am really want to get rid of something, if I'm banishing something, I will go from the bottom and just, I cannot use that candle to show you, um, but I'll go from the base <laughs> and <laughs> work it all the way out, you know, and I, and as I, I will, shit. Okay, so as I go from the base, you know, I, I would, shit, I would get the oil and just go that way, and then I would kind of like throw the energy. Like I want it out, right. away exactly. from me, and I would create that um, those triggers <laughs> to to help me get into that mind frame. But this is what I'm doing. This I'm banishing. I'm getting some shit away. I don't need that, you know, bad energy, uh, negative juju, nothing. Um, so I would do that. If you want to bring something towards you, uh, let's use the skull candle. Um, <laughs> you would start from, or I would start from the top and I'd call in like divine energy and see the top as like the cosmic soul, the cosmic essence. And so as I'm anointing, I'd be pulling that essence down. I'd be pulling that energy down from the top and then pull it towards me and end at the base. Um, and as it, you know, travels down, I see it manifesting and in my head. I see like the energy, you know, it's very fine tuned and it vibrates very high on a cosmic level. And then as we go down, it starts to get a little more physical, starts to get a little more mundane. And as it hits the base, it hits me. This is my experience. This is what I'm calling towards me. And so it is made manifest. So right. that's when I'm anointing with oils and yeah. yes bring it to me bitch like just yeah. come on now that's how i have to remember how to do it i'm like okay i'm throwing it away bring it to me okay this is the way i have to do right this right um but I feel like it's a little bit easier because you can do clockwise and counterclockwise but i'm serious just use like a drop of oil because yeah just like <laughs> you know I mean? it is so close to the flame just for your own safety and always always y'all this is what saves my house put it in a fire safe dish and like if i'm going to be doing other things like cleaning the house i'll also usually place it like in my sink and sort of set up my altar in my sink like if i know i'm not going to be able to focus all the whole time on that so uh, other times if i if i'm doing it you know uh, casting a spell in the evening have the house pretty much to myself or one's asleep i'll spend a lot of time in front of my altar and i'm always aware so i won't do that but right. yeah fire safety y'all <laughs> right and you know <laughs> if that's like honestly like a serious concern like it, and it should be um do your thumb a little bit of oil and so that little bit is a lot so rub it into your hands rub it in and allow you know it to kind of disperse and then anoint it that way you take away from your thumbs or whatever you're using to you know anoint the candle um but yeah safety first y'all <laughs> even though i will say the ones that did like blow up practically i got some excellent results <laughs> well, i mean not what i expected but uh, it was excellent results so right Right. And there's, you know, when you're using herbs or dry ingredients, what I do sometimes, I don't see, I like using oils and I use herbs. I kind of just like put it around the candle and maybe like blow it on the candle, you know, just like sprinkle it a little or something. But I usually use, I, I grid my candle. So I'll use herbs and such around it. And I push the energy into the candle. So it's charging as it's burning. Um, and right. so I'll do that. Um, and that's fine. That's good. But when you and are I, dressing, <laughs> right, and safer, uh, when you are dressing your candles, do not oversaturate your candle with oil, with dry ingredients. And it's not just the safety concern. It's the energy, too. Because if you pour anything, just you cover your candle in all this shit, all that energy is kind of acting as a barrier. So as your candle burns, it's not really doing as much as it could. If it, you know, less is more, especially with when you're working with different energies and magics, less is more and you put too much on, that's just too much shit 
and you kind of like putter out with your your energy and you don't really get the results that you could right well it'll put out your plan like physically and if that happens there goes your spell because it, you know it wasn't allowed to burn all the way through it the, it didn't get near the energy it could have if you had just used you know a little bit here and a little bit there so yeah i do not think that dumping a ton of stuff on your candle is a very good way to execute a candle magic spell right and That's just yeah. my experience so yeah yeah and and i've seen it and i've done it you know back in my baby witch days i've done it like not intentionally but as they start like you know rolling it or doing you know the herbs and the oil thing i just ended up with a hot mess it was too much and just not good no bueno people no bueno uh <laughs> but yeah so um is there anything else that you want to express i can't really think of anything i think we've covered pretty much there's so much in so many ways we could talk about candle magic so we're just trying to crunch everything in um other than that i would just say the reason why i love candle magic and i know i mentioned it briefly before is how versatile it is you can use it for banishing you can use it for attraction you can use it for devotion you can use it for you know a focal point to to go into trance you can use candles for so many things and it's the easiest uh ingredient tool to purchase to find go into so if you're in a you know magic desert <laughs> where no one around you practices magic you can still walk into dollar the dollar store and dollar central a ton of you know uh candles to use so it to me, especially for starting out, it is the perfect learning tool that you really get you accustomed to, to casting your own spells and even creating your own spells. So um, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's why I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, I love you know, it's fun. It's just fun. Working with fire is fun and candles are, are beautiful and it's uh it, I think it's one of the easiest forms of magic because we connect with candles um, a lot. Uh, for it, they set the you know the tone, the environment, the atmosphere. Um, one thing I will say before we leave is if you're utilizing a candle for like a devotion, you're putting it on your altar to honor your spirits, God, gods, goddess, whatever, angels, um, saints, whatnot. Before your candle dies out, get a new candle, bless it and transfer the energy so every time you're you have your devotional candle um it is getting stronger and you're building a deeper connection with it and, and with your your practice of you know having your devotion connecting with spirit or whatnot uh, because each time you pour that energy into the next candle it's a lot like highlander you know when they kill uh <laughs> one of the immortals they get their power um it's not like that really so when one candle dies it passes its essence to the next and you just keep building that up and that's a very powerful experience so definitely do that um mm -hmm. if if y'all have any questions uh please don't hesitate to ask utilize the comment section uh below and ask us and we'll definitely do our best to uh, respond but i think that's it y'all so I look forward to what everyone else has to say this week. Uh, yeah, be blessed. Bye, guys.